Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. So this is the TP-Link ONT G point and this one is the XZ000GG that we have been talking about in the previous video. And in this video, I'm going to test out and let's see what do we have inside. And after that, let's stabilize the URAT connection to this G point ONT and let's see what do we have. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to remove the power to turn it down. And after that, gently remove the fiber cable. Very good. Alright, so for this one, we can see that there is no screw at all. So it looks like we will need to open some of the clock like this one. And if you have a card, let's say it's a Visa or MasterCard that have been used, then it's very easy to tear it out. But in this case, I don't have it. So I just try with this tool. I'm not sure if I can do that. But let's try it. All right. It's quiet. All right. So here we go. We already opened the first one. Let me see. All right. So there is a crack sounds and I'm not sure if I break something but here it is all right so it's another tear down all right so we have one two and three this side and then let give a try with this size all right very good here it is so for the fiber port Alright, very good. And here we are. The G Bond ON3 from TP Link. Alright, so we see that this is the back of it. And right here we have one, two, and three. And then on the top side we have two. So let's say if you're going to use a card or something to open it, you just need to unlock one, two, three, four, and five to tear down very simple very easy all right so as you can see we have right here one two three and four so if you have a solder station you can use the solder station to melt down the top of this plastic nut and after that you can take it out but in my case i don't have a plastic nut so i'm going to try this way all right so let me see so first I will put some piece of uh, clothing on this one just like that all right uh, you can see and then I'm going to put this one at the back like this one and then use some fork to open it up and let's see all right so as you can see we have successfully removed this one out and I'm going to do the same for this side. Okay, so let's put it in. All right, very good. So we can see that this work. And then here is the PCB. All right. All right, so this is the PCB of the g bond ONT from TP-Link, the XZ000G3. And we can see that this is an SC-APC connector, or this one I can call it a chamber. So we can see that the fiber cable is going to another kind of uh, adapter or chamber before it go to this uh, laser transceiver module i'm not sure how i call it but this is it we can see that the fiber cable go to this one and after that we have this gigabit ethernet port right here the power 
connector go to some sort of uh, capacitors and then we have this uh, button a uh, reset button so on this one I can see some uh, numbering uh, like what you can see right here xz00g3 eu1 and I can see right here it stated that the versions is 2.0 so I'm going to take some clear photo of the board just in case you want to take a look. All right. So let me see. So in the center, I can see that the chief is called Econet and then the code EEN7521SCU. I'm going to put the full name of the chief on the video so that you can take a look. And after that, this should be uh, Ethernet uh, transceiver module. It's a FPE at two zero two zero two DLR, and that's it. Let me see. Then no much thing. And fortunately, on the top right here, we have the URAT connectors, and you can see we have TX, RX, GND, and VCC. So in order to accept to the URAT connection, we will need to solder the pin and we are going to do it now. Alright, so as you can see, this is my USB to several connectors and now I'm going to connect the TX, RX, and GND pin to the URAT connectors on the G.0 NT and for the power, I'm not sure is it 3.3 or 5 ohm so I will leave this cable blank but instead I'm going to connect the power adapter to the power jacks and let's see if the device is up and running If I go to my computer, go to this PC, go to more and manage, I can see that the COM port should be up and running right here. So let me see, we should have the COM port. All right, let's see. So unfortunately, there is no COM port up and running in this case. So I have just disconnect and reconnect it and Right here, I see a USB several C H three four zero on COM six. So let me open Putes and go to COM six. All right. So as first, we're going to give a try with one one five two hundred and let's see. And very good. We can see a response right here. Starting PID three four nine TTY. Very good. So TP link login. The file login will be admin and the password is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hit enter. And yes, I have a root asset to the device. Very good. So let me see what is here. So we have some uh, typical commands. Uh, we have the pin, etc, Linux, XRC, pros, and something like that. So let me try to cut CPU, info, and let's see. Alright, so we can see that the CPU is Econet EN751221SOC and this is it. Alright, so I'm going to share this one in a post update so that you can see what is going on. And if I cut proc mem info, let's see. Alright, so we have around 60,000 kilobytes, which is around 64 megabytes. I'm not sure if this is correct. And let's see, you name A, this is the Linux kernel 2.6.36. And let's see what about the DMS. All right, so a lot of pause, a lot of line showing up right here. So let me go to the very first line and let's see. Alright, 
So how about top? Let's see if we have this command. Yes, and we have the command available right here. So yes, here it is. All right, so now let me run this command cat prod mtd and let's see uh, what it is layer that we have. So we have the flash tc boot room file factory info loig hardware info config iot kernel 8 and root fs8. So this is what we have. So we can see that the URAT connection to the device is quite easy, but it's required soldering. And so far, I already can root asset to the G.0 ONT, which is really great. So we can try to learn more about it and enable at that age so that we can do something else in the future. So that's it. And now I'm going to put everything back, connect the fiber cable, connect the internet cable, and I'm going to try if I can have more controls on the web UI by reviewing the hidden uh, URL. Now let's continue to dig the TP-Link XZ00G tree. And according to the comment from Michael right here, we can accept to some of the hidden feature to modify the vendor ID and show web versions and something like that. And basically, we need to add the link to onudebug.htm, gbon iot edit .htms, and something like that. So let me see if I can do that. All right. So let's say we are going to copy the first one, which is this one. So onudebug.htm. And now I'm already at the admin page of the gbon onu. All right, so very good. So let's go to the status network setting. So this is the current setting that we have. And then this is the current status from where upgrade, from where update, and something like that. So let's try to inspect this one. So inspect control queue. So right here, we can see that the ID menu one class selections and um, this is the URL of the device. So, so what is happening if I change this one dot htm to the ONU? So let's modify that and let's see. All right, so it say that ONU debug dot htm hit OK. Very good. So just now we change the pond right here to this one. So let me click on it again. So let's see. And we can see that nothing is happening. There's nothing on this right page. So maybe we can give another try. Let's say if I go to the point certification, inspect again, and this time I will change something else. So All right, so and right here I have to ID in menu one. So what if I change this ID to ONU debug? Okay, let's see. All right, so and nothing happened. So maybe in the recent firmware there has been some change to block our asset to some of the hidden features, or maybe I did it in the wrong way. So if you have any idea how to do that, please share in the comment section, and I will be happy to give it a try. And lastly, before ending this video, I will try to back up the firmware of this device. And according to Michael, we can easily jump the firmware. So basically, we just need to run this command via the URAT connector to create a backup or a jump. And let's do that together. All right. So by doing this one, we'll already copy this MTD02, the MTD test in the TMP directory. All right, so next we will need to run this command to send this file 
to the TFTP server located in this one 192.168.8.1 so we will need to start a TFTP server in order to receive that file okay so let's see if we have the TFTP 64 right here and whether it can work at a TFTP server all right so we have that one and when we want to copy the firmware I believe we need to directly connect the computer to the router all right so let me go to the network internet setting chain adapter option and right here I'm going to change my IPv4 address to 192.168.1 maybe .5 and hit OK all right so right now I have no internet connection and just now I connect my PC to the Gbon ONT so let's see if I can ping it 192.168.1.1 yes we have the response very good so as you can see just now we have a disconnection and a reconnection so make sure that the TFTPD server is running all right so I have right here the server interface which is this one and right now let's try to run the command and let's see if it's working all right so copy that paste in and this one is will be dot one dot five server error access violation okay one thing i'm not sure if it is a problem with my in dot tftp server or shells on this device but the server automatically don't create a new file so before sending i need to create mdt text file in the roots of the tftp server without writing permission to be able to transfer so which means we will need to go to our directory right here which is this one because it's actually in the root directory so maybe we need to go to that one and let me try to create a file with the name mtd test all right new all right so we need to have a root access how come this is not possible so never mind i'm going to create a directory on my e right hit ok and let's see if it's work and perfect looks like the transferring is happening in the background let me see I have received the file from the router all right but we can see that the transfer speed is really low so I, therefore it will take some time to complete all right the file transfers is completed and let's see so right here on the E directory we have a file and we can see that the file is 4 megabytes all right very good so now since I already back up the MTD zeros I will try to back up all the MTD as well and maybe some of you may need it so again cat prop MTD and we have MTD 0 to MTD 9 so I will try to copy them one by one to have a backup and just in case any one of you need it please let me know all right so I'm going to end the video here and in the next one I hope to receive your instructions or your command on how to access to the hidden features such as modify same numbers the hardware and the software version or something like that so thanks for watching and see you all in the next video